The purpose of today's session is to give a bit of an overview of Protomix WMS, essentially the key elements of the solution, um, as well as some of the general kind of workflows that can progress through it. <clears throat> so as we take a look, I'm running obviously here on a SQL Server um, instance. Uh, it's able to be run on either SQL Server or HANA equally as well. There's virtually no difference in the solution itself. So let me just go ahead and kind of close out the messages and alerts overview. Uh, one of the key things to understand about Protomex is that there is no second database, but everything is contained absolutely within the same SAP Business One database as the company, and also that the transactions are instantaneous. So let's take a look. As you can see, Protomex produces another menu selection here, a, a menu grouping. And within that menu grouping, you have everything that you need in terms of administration to be able to manage the warehouse. So you have this functionality that allows you to establish the organizational structure, which is the warehouse map, the warehouse structure, you know, the uh, warehouses, bin locations, docks, uh, movable locations, carts, uh, even silos and way stations, those types of things. Gives you the ability to run an inventory report, which allows you to see all the inventory, regardless of where it is within the warehouse. Um, allows you to run through some sales processes, purchasing processes. It does have route and truck routing um, and delivery and container management also. Uh, allows you to be able to do some uh, pick list proposals and move orders and the like. Uh, has some production functionality. Uh, has some 3PL processing. Um, supports its own cycle count process. This is distinct and separate from the SAP stock count, however, so be careful of, of positioning that against the uh, the capabilities of Business One. Has some reports, so there's some some various reports that we'll we'll dip into in just a minute. Uh, and it also has the capability to do some interfacing to um, things like. Uh, uh, warehouse automation equipment, pick to light carousels. Um, coming soon is some RFID technology, which which our uh, our product management team is taking a look at for 2020. A little bit about some uh, enhanced serial man serial number management, and then just some support tools as well, which is really just this ability to run uh, some of the the go to meetings and and uh, different types of tools to be able to help us support you. So let's go ahead and take a look quickly at uh, at other capabilities. So we've got, again, the the piece of Protomex that sits within SAP Business One. It has its own menu structure. We also have within the inventory, we have the uh, another tab that is added to the SAP Business One menu uh, item master menu. So if I go ahead and take a quick look at uh, a couple different items here, let me just go into some Irish salmon. And what you'll see here is we have all of our standard capabilities within at the SAP Business One Inventory Management screen, but we also have some additional capabilities delivered by Protomex. And this is really good in terms of regulated industries that have uh, very detailed serialization or lot tra tracking um, requirements. There's also a Protomex tab, and on that Protomex tab, you have some additional detail capabilities um, which you'll really want to take a look at. So we do support not only the SAP Business One multiple units of measure in, in uh, item, item groups, um, but we also have the ability to support catch weight. And that is unique within the WMS capabilities within Business One, uh, within the Business One environment. So we do have this ability to be able to keep track of inventory in two different dimensions, in this case, by count and by weight. Uh, so as we take a look, I've got the definition of what the two units of measures are. I have this capability of being able to say what kind of the standard units of measure are, what their what their weight is. Um, do I want to scan the weight for each case? In this case, it's fish. So this I'm referring to is really that catch weight scenario where you have in the food industry this requirement to have to keep track of inventory in two different units of measure. We have the sales 
tab. Um, again, there's there's things here related to how you configure replenishment, um, some images that you can put uh, in the system so that when you're packing out, you can actually look at the, the image to make sure you have the right product. Whether you want to add non-inventory items to pick lists. So there's a lot of different things here. Um, some controls on whether you have a, a single lot or batch um, or whether you want to be able to mix lots or batches on a sales order. Um, some purchasing information, whether you want to create SSCCs. These SSCCs are more commonly referred to sometimes in the industry as license plates. Um, <clears throat> but those can be a case, they can be a pallet, they can be a tote, what have you. And you can automatically create them when you're receiving an inventory. And again, we'll in our receiving workflow that we do in a separate video, we'll, we'll go into detail on that. Whether you want to print labels at reception and the like. Um, some production capabilities. Again, we'll we'll dive into that a little bit as as part of the system administration and setup. Uh, we talked a little bit about catch weight. I do have the ability to add additional attributes to bats, batches, and lots. Um, so obviously, this particular item has has this whole thing built out where I'm using catch weight and I'm using the additional batch attribute codes, but. I uh, just wanted to kind of show the full capabilities of the system. If you're just keeping track of inventory by item and quantity, you don't need all this stuff, um, but it is, it's good to know because many of the opportunities that we have um, do get into those types of areas. So that's, uh, that's again, kind of some additional functionality that's added right inside of SAP Business One. Uh, then we look at the business partners as well. There's also some additional functionality uh, so if I just quickly take a look at, at Max Teak, um, I do have a, a Protumex tab here. If I go over here and it just kind of talks about setting some, some defaults, um, how you want to uh, group sales deliveries, if you want to have different types of pick lists, uh, if they're loading on the pallets, what type of pallets are they on receiving, um, if, I'm, if this has to do mostly with 3PL. Um, some of the parameters for receiving for this customer. Um, how do I want to uh, go ahead and manage that? So again, as we take a look at things, um, we'll delve into it in a lot more detail uh, when we get into the actual transaction base. This is intended to give you an idea or a view of the, what the type of, of functionality we have. So uh, that shows us really kind of the build out of all the different functionality we have that's additive. Um, both standalone within the business one environment, then also integrated into the existing screens. Then we actually, as we look out onto the handheld application, um, this is the the what we call the fat client or the the handheld application. This has all the different menu options and functions that you have available to you in the warehouse. So it's grouped into the various logistics areas of purchasing, which is your inbound supply chain, sales, which is your outbound supply chain, logistics, which is anything to do with inside the warehouse, uh, and then you have production as well. So as we look at purchasing, we have different functions. So you receive the product, you put it away, you can handle purchase returns, you can do cross docking, which is the concept of taking something and identifying the fact that a sales order has a purchase order coming in and you want to receive that and get that to that sales order right away. Uh, we have bulk receiving, ASN receiving. So if you have a customer that has EDI ASNs coming in from their suppliers, um, you can receive based upon those. Uh, you have the ability to receive from non-WMS managed warehouses. So within Business One, you can identify just which warehouses you want to have managed um, through the WMS. And this allows you the capability of being able to receive from those um, into the WMS. So backing back out, as we look at sales, we have uh, picking multi-picking, zone picking, ad hoc picking. These are all different picking strategies. This is really picking by individual sales order. If I create a wave or a grouping of per, uh, per, uh, sales orders, I can go ahead and, and use multiple picking. Um, if I have a very large warehouse and I have multiple zones, you know, different areas within the warehouse where I want multiple people picking the same order but doing it in different areas in the warehouse, I can do that. And then ad hoc picking is just exactly as it says, hey, I'm just going to you know, go in and decide what I want to do in terms of picking a sales order. 
I have this concept of preparing carts. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit when we get into more detail in the fulfillment area. I have mobile packing. So if I have a, a two-step process where I'm picking out of the warehouse bins, and then I'm packing it into boxes or packing it onto pallets, I can go ahead and do that using the mobile packing. Obviously, I have shipping. I have sales returns. Um, I have bulk shipping. I have this ability to combine packed SSCCs. This means that if I go through the packing process and I'm packing into boxes or cases, and then I need to bulk, you know, put those onto a pallet and identify that each one of those individual cases is on that pallet, that's how I do that. Uh, I have undo picking, so that's pretty straightforward. Then as we look at logistics, uh, I have the move functions. So those cover ad hoc movement. You know, that can be a bin to bin move. Um, I can do move orders. So out of the out of the management portion of the application within SAP, I can create move orders, which are basically going to tell somebody where what to take from what location and where to put it. I have replenishment processing within the system, so the system will automatically keep track of what bins are running low for particular products and automatically create move orders to replenish those picking locations from the bulk locations. We have consolidated moves, so if I want to take a you know bunch of uh, material from one location and move it to another, I can do that as part of consolidated move. And this is uh, this again has to do with warehouse automation equipment. So if I happen to be doing a bunch of production on an automated machine and it's creating a bunch of receipts and I want to record those into Protomax, I can go ahead and do that using that functionality. As we go ahead and take a look at the inventory options, I have direct cycle counting, cycle counting. Um, direct cycle counting is an immediate capability. So this is just immediately creating a, a goods receipt or a goods issue based upon how you want to count that. And I can either count a particular location, I can adjust a logistics unit. Again, a logistics unit being one of those SSCCs, be it a case, be it a pallet, be it a location. Um, I can count the items, all the items in a given location. So that's my direct cycle counting. There's no workflow, no process to it. It's just a direct count. I also have my cycle counting, which is which follows a flow. So if I take a quick look at the cycle counting, if I want to go ahead and select the locations that I want to have cycle counted using the select cycle count screen, and then I want to go ahead and go into cycle counting, I can say that I want to do it with a task or without a task. Uh, meaning that if I create a set of locations that need to be uh, counted, uh, I can do that with the task. If I'm going to kind of do a bit in more of an ad hoc scenario, uh, then I would do it without task. But the bottom line is this is where we take it and we don't immediately do the goods receipt and the goods issue. We go through what's called the process screen, and that's going to go ahead and look at all the different cycle counts that I did through the uh, the ind what I'll call an indirect cycle count. So that's uh, as we take a look, that's that. And then as we go to production, um, obviously if we create production or orders within SAP Business One, I can do picking for those production orders. If I release a pick list off of that production order in Business One, I can go ahead and pick for uh, execute on that pick list. Once things are picked, I can choose to move those products to the production line. So if I do a pick to a staging area, I can go ahead and use the move to production line. And then of course I can do a receipt from production. So this is all on the handheld application, meaning I'm running it on a mobile scanner. We have two other alternative user interfaces. So you heard me talk about Packout. And I can do mobile packing, or if I'm bringing it to a packing station where I have a computer or perhaps a tablet, I have more of a full-size user interface that I can go ahead and, you know, if I want to say I'm at packing station one, um, it then gives me more of a touch screen interface. So I would touch tap to say, get me my cart, meaning give me the movable location that I've picked from the bins and put the stock on in order to pack out and I can go ahead and I don't have anything on that particular cart let's see I may we may get more into this when we do our picking 
Now, okay, I don't have anything in that cart. Let me just try one more to see if I have anything. Okay, so here we go. Um, so we've got some product to uh, to pack out. We already have a box or a, or a pallet that we've we've started to pack onto, but I'm going to go ahead and say I'm I'm packing into a new box. I can create a normal SSCC, so I'm creating a new license plate. And here you can see it's telling me what I should be putting into that case. Again, we'll go into this in a bit more detail in the kind of the fulfillment workflow, um, but I wanted to have you aware that there is a separate user interface, usually on a tablet or a, a touchscreen computer for purposes of packing out. And then also from a production line perspective, rather than doing the production on the handheld where we have that production capability if i have a terminal or a tablet at the production line i also have this ability to be able to say hey i'm at production line one i'm producing some lot controlled material so i can either generate the lot number or record the lot number just go ahead and tap on that i can actually have a secondary lot number as well and then it's going to go ahead and say um, just kind of, again, give me this user interface, very touchscreen, very large, very attractive. If there were items that still needed to be picked, you could see those here. Um, if I wanted to print a product label, I can do that. So you can just see there's a, a lot of functionality here. Again, we'll get back into that when we go through the full production process. But we just wanted to go ahead and introduce the capabilities that we have within the system. As I take a look, I have really the, the main area within SAP Business One. So this is what allows me to go ahead and uh, administer and manage the warehouse itself. I have additional functionality within the item master file that allows me to go ahead and, and extend the definition and add a lot of uh, processing functionality to the item definition itself. I have information on my business partners that allows me to go ahead and, and again, set defaults, et cetera, for that type of thing. And then I have my different mobile user interfaces. I have my handheld user interface, I have a packout user interface, and I have a production user interface. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of the overall kind of scope and breadth of functionality What's key to understand is that if you're going to manage inventory in a warehouse using Protomex, then you get, need to be fully committed to it because as we start to take a look at even any of the transactions, so if I were to go to an inventory transaction in a goods issue, the solution is adding all the functionality that you need um, in terms of being able to transact stock that's in the warehouse on a pure business one transaction so you can do it on the handheld or if we were to say hey i'm going to uh let's go ahead and, and just very quickly you can see the irish organic salmon and as we take a look then at the storage location you can see there's fields here that i have formatted searches on to go ahead and prompt me with where things are and what the quality status is and what the sscc number is Bottom line is, if you're going to go ahead and manage a warehouse through Protomex, every inventory transaction you do, regardless of whether it's through the handheld or whether it's through Business One, is going to require all the full information on it. So that's really it in terms of an overview of what's contained within SAP Business One and Protomex when it's installed together. Um, you can obviously see our B1UP dashboards, uh, which hang very nicely in this demo environment. But the next set of videos that I do are going to go into more uh, the setup and administration of Protomex. That will be another one. We'll do the inbound supply chain. We'll do an outbound supply chain, and we'll do a warehouse management video as well. So hopefully this provides you some functionality, some uh, just capabilities, areas that I tend to, to try to highlight of the overall functionality of the solution. And uh, again, there'll be additional videos that you can get into to be able to uh, find out more in detail about the solution. Thanks.